So why don't we just open in a word of prayer, and then we're going to be challenged by the word tonight. And um, I appreciate every one of you that's here. And um, um, we're not live on Facebook or anything like that tonight. And so we can, we'll talk a little bit here, share from, from, the, from the word. And just a challenge for our church to be praying for believers. Um, they're, during this day, and there t- needs to be a, f- a fire of the spirit to move in our life. And so this Sunday morning, I want to share on the impartation of the Holy Spirit and how there needs to be a fresh move of the spirit in our hearts and lives uh, not just in our church services uh, but in our daily lives and we've seen that in the early church is the believers um, were filled the believers uh, went everywhere preaching the word sharing the word the gospel and there has been unfortunately over the decades here now the centuries um, that it has oftentimes been delegated to more the uh, paid professionals, you might say, and unfortunately, the the believers, the church, has lost its its significance, its importance, and has been um, consumed with things of this world. And Jesus is coming back, and we need to be ready. Amen. And so, Father, we just thank you for your presence in our life. We thank you that you are are with us. You are here. You are you are alive in our life individually. I thank you that every individual in this room has a fresh experience with you tonight. Lord, we're not looking for a moving song. We're not looking for a thrilling sermon. We are amazed that there's a God in heaven that loves us and wants to be with us. And so we just take these next few moments tonight and we pause. We we are reminded of just your greatness. Uh, We are refocusing our lives to live the rest of our lives, to bring you glory and honor, that we are reminded that heaven is for eternity and that that hell also is for eternity and that we, we the church, as individuals, um, need the power of the Holy Spirit to be working in us and through us to accomplish your will in this day and this hour. And so, Lord, thank you for your presence um, stirring within us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, we hear your voice. There are so many voices, Lord, right now that are are trying to take our attention away. So many voices, so many situations, so many problems. And Lord, we just uh, thank you that you said that your sheep would hear your voice. So we just ask, Father God, for that scripture to be true in this next hour as we come together. That there will be no guilt or condemnation but there will be a fresh determination that would rise up on the inside of us. Stir within us, Father God, for the the fresh desire to follow after you. And just thank you for your presence. Um, In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we got a good God we're following after in life, and he desires to do good things in our life. And yet there are times in life that, that we struggle, and we get tired, and we get wore out. And so, as pastor, I just want to remind us again tonight, we, we looked last week a little bit at, at Psalm 34 and, and that first verse there, and if you want to get that out and just keep it laying before you, uh, I don't have any slides for you tonight, we're going old school, so it's all dark behind me back here, but you've got the light right there in front of you, the Word of God, so if you brought your Bible, otherwise I'll read these scriptures along. You know, uh, years ago, people didn't even have a Bible, couldn't read. And so the word was declared, the word was spoken. We, I was reading through the Old Testament when they, the, uh, the prophets got, and the priests, they would take the word and they would just read the word and how the people were blessed just to hear the word, to listen to it. And so tonight as we look at this and we listen to it, that it's not my desire to give you another sermon, it's not my desire just to preach to you again, but to remind us of the word and allow it to impact us, to challenge us, to change us. Um, to challenge the way that we're thinking and, and living in a, and speaking. And back in the Old Testament, we looked at this last week, Psalm 34, verse 1, where David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be on my mouth. His praise will continually be in my mouth. How'd that work out for you this week? Uh, uh, that was a, a verse we read last week. I'm sure you took it to heart. I'm sure you started to putting it to practice. 
sometimes, well, no, I'll say most times, it's easier to preach the word than to live the word. Can I, can I get an amen out of you? But that's where we, we've got to say, I, I have to be practicing this. I have to be changing my lifestyle to be more like this. We oftentimes read this and we kind of put David, remember, we think of him just in the palace with a harp and everything going great. But David wrote this verse, remember, when he was a refuge for his life. He was hiding out in the cave because the, the king was trying to kill him and, the, and his enemies were after him. And so he was a refuge, a refugee in a cave. Uh, he was hiding out. And those that, that gathered to him were those that were depressed, those that were discouraged, those that were in debt, and those that were bitter had come to be with him. And so that was the group around him. And, and instead of allowing their attitude to get a hold of him, he was reminding himself and training them instructing them and being an example for them just what the, we should be like because of who God is. So let me pause right here and say, we're going to have difficult days ahead of us. We're going to have trying times. People around us are going to increase in their complaining. People are going to get more in debt along the way. And when we get more in debt, folks, that always becomes greater pressure in our life. People are going to get bitter along the way. But the question is, are you going to get bitter or are you going to get better at praising the Lord in your life? It's up to you. We're not just looking to come together and praise God on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. But he said, continually, continually, this is what's going to be coming out of my mouth. I want to ask you, what's been coming out of your mouth lately? What's been coming out of your mouth? How, are you been, how have you been affecting those that are around you? Our praise, our praise is what we give to God. This is a little, you know, we need to understand, folks, even when we come to church and, and we, we normally have a time of praise and worship, that part of the service, it's all about God. It's not about you. It's all about what we get to give to God. And the thing is, when we give something to God, he reveals to us, give and it shall be given unto you. We want to hear a good sermon from God, but usually, if we'll look at it, the more powerful praise we give to him, usually the better word we get back from him. The more we praise him and glorify him and exalt him for who he is, before we get anything from him. That's why we need to spend time praising the Lord, putting him first place in our life. Praising God for who he is, not for what he's done. When we praise God, it is a, out of a personal revelation of who God is. A personal revelation of who God is. Do you know God? Do you know who he is? Do you know what he has done for you? Yes. But who he is daily in your life. Because God never changes no matter the circumstances or the situations that we face. And so tonight I want to just stir us up on the inside to say I'm going to continually praise the Lord. If David could do that in the Old Testament, then we should be able to do that in the New Testament. Why? Because 1 Peter 2, 2, 9, 1 Peter 2, 9, verse in the New Testament, I want you to jump over to. I want you to memorize this verse. I want you to meditate on this verse. I want you to have this verse engrafted into you. I want this verse to be ingrained into you. Why? Because the devil is a liar. And he'll try to tell you you're somebody that you're not. He'll try to convince you that you're worthless, that you're no good, that you're defeated, that you're crazy, that, that something's weird about you. He, or, or he'll even try to convince you that you're something special without God. No, you're not. I want you to know that what God has done in our life is what has transformed and changed us. And this verse is one that we in this day need to hold on to. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 the new king, or excuse me, the King James says, but, but you are, but you are, not you will be when you get to heaven, not you should be if you are a better Christian, but the Bible declares who you are. We got to get basic sometimes, folks. 
We got to cut past our feelings. We got to got to stop listening to what other people say. We got to stop listening to those voices of accusation or, or temptation in our head. And the Word of God declares that Dennis is, that Kathy is, that you are. This is who we are. You are a chosen generation. You are, we could continue on with saying it this way, you are a royal priesthood. That's who we are. Well, I don't feel like, it doesn't matter whether you feel like it or not, we need to make decisions based on what the Word declares to us, what Jesus has done for us, not how, whether we, we've been good this week or not. It's not Santa Claus. He's not up there checking whether you've been naughty or nice. He is declaring who you are, and then he says, as you have a personal revelation of who I am and what I have done so who you are, then you'll start living like who you are, and when you live like who I declared you to be and made you to be, then you start to resemble your heavenly Father. Where we were seeing that scripture last week where it tells us in Ephesians 5, 1, be imitators of God. But he says here, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. That, does that mean that we all got to have a long robe and we got to have a special kind of garb that we wear? No, it is our lineage. What he's called us to be. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. Holy. Does that mean that you never sin? Well, I wish it did. But holy means it is sanctified or set apart for a purpose. You are set apart for a purpose. You are sanctified for a purpose. Why isn't there more people here tonight? Well, part of the purpose is because people don't know who they are. They don't realize what God has called them to be. They don't realize God has called them out of this world doesn't realize, and I know that sometimes situations, I know Lisa's not here tonight. That doesn't mean that she's backslidden. Doesn't mean that she's forgotten who she is. Doesn't mean that she's off in sin somewhere. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to have perfect attendance at church. But I'm saying, for the most part, there's a lack of revelation of who we are because there's a lack of understanding about who God is. And we don't understand who God is because we, we have not been in intimate relationship with God. We've kept him at a safe distance. Why is it that Pluto is a cold planet and Mercury is a hot planet? One's closer to the sun than the other. Why is it that some Christians are on fire for God, some Christians are lukewarm, and some Christians are cold? How close are they to God? It's, it's not how all loved us so much. Have we, have we, have we forgotten just the, the, the intimacy and the relationship that he's called us to, that he didn't call us just to be a part of a particular race. He didn't call us just to be a part of a particular nation. He called us to be in his family, to sit at his table that he prepared for us. Have we heard these things so many times that it doesn't hit our heart anymore? Have we drawn cold and we're waiting for somebody to come along with a new song to get us going or a new preacher to get us fired up, a new revelation that's going to stir us? A new disaster that's going to get us to the, now I need God. I am amazed at the number of people that don't come to church on a regular basis, but when they have a disaster, call in. They know the church's number for prayer. They call in and want God to move in their life at that particular moment. And thank God that they do. But folks, God wants us to have a, a, an intimate relationship with him based on who he is, not based on the latest crisis that we've caused in our life. So I want to read it out in the Amplified Translation, if I could here, for just a moment. First Peter 2, 9 says it this way, but you are a chosen race of royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possessions. 
that you, that you may proclaim the excellency, the wonderful deeds, the virtues, and the perfections of, whom, of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. I want to ask you again, would you please memorize that verse? Would you please internalize that verse? Will you please ask the Holy Spirit to stir on the inside of that verse? But as I was reading that verse tonight, as your pastor, I just want kind of, if I could take a little bit of leave on this and just simply say it this way, I'm calling you out tonight. I'm calling you out tonight. Have you been praising the Lord lately? I'm, I want to just call you out. Have you been expl- uh, declaring his virtues lately? I want to call you out. Have you spent more time praising God for who he is or reminding him about the problems in your life and what you need to do? What was it, Art, you t- uh, texted me about, that, about faith? Say it loud enough, I can hear it. So we said what we, what we should do is our faith grows is to develop from asking God what, what we want him to do for us. I, I'm messing it up a little bit, but it'll be close enough. The, asking God to do for us to, God, what can I do for you? When we are amazed at, at the relationship we have with God, isn't it interesting, Jesus at age 12, we got a stained glass window back there that reminds us of it. At age 12, Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. He didn't say, I need to ask my father for a new pair of sandals. I'm running out of them. I need some new school supplies to be able to be up with the kids at age 12. No, Jesus at age 12 gave us an example. He said, I must be about my father. I need to do that. At the the very end of his life, not my will, but thy will be done. He didn't ask her for comfort. He didn't ask that the people would be nice to him. He didn't ask that there would be the least amount of pain as possible. He said, Father God, uh, be it unto me according to your will. He was a desire to follow after and to do. When we start to praise God and we get to an uh, an area, we start to to exalt him and praise him about his great merciful works in our life, who he is, we start to find out that I start to praise him because of who he is. And then I start to say, God, if you're that great, then what can I do for you? Instead of, God, I got some more stuff I need you to do for me. When was the last time you prayed in in real uh, 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 intimacy, God, I want to do something for you that it will take you in my life to do it? Uh, What is it that that, that I can do? I'm hearing people, I'm pastor, I'm going to have to stop tithing because my money's getting tight. Oh, what a good time to say, I'm just going to double up and give even more to God because I ain't got enough with what I got, so I might as well give what I got and say God's going to be more than enough in my life. I'm not taking up an offering. I'm not trying to get your money. I'm just trying to say, where is our intimacy? Is God our provider only in good times or is God our provider? Who is he in your life? And how will you know that God is your provider until you get to a place you have no provision other than God in your life? We don't like to get to that place, but when we get to that place, it's a wonderful place to say, my God will provide all my needs according to his riches and glory because of who he is. But oftentimes, we don't like to get to that place in our life. We don't want to be in a difficult situation. As we're going forward, folks, tonight, I'm calling you out and say, have you been praising God to the, to the, to the level of the personal revelation that you have of his greatness? of who he is, of, of, of his desire to have relationship with you. One man had said it this way. He says, it's not right for our praise to be silent when our God is so great. It's, I, 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 I was in a meeting today, and I won't repeat it. I, I said it to someone earlier tonight, but we were just a complete stranger. We were talking. He had some uh, perverted offhand comment that he made, and I thought, boy, it was easy for that to roll off of his tongue. We ought to have praises to God rolling off to our tongue to complete strangers. Just complete strangers ought to hear about our great God. That complete strangers ought to hear about how the good, good goodness of God in our life. It ought to just roll off of our tongue. But how will it happen unless I am disciplined to say my mouth will always have praise that belongs to God? I'm not going to give myself permission to grape and complain when I have a great God that wants to do so much in my life. 
I desire to know him. You know, in the Old Testament, we have the names of God that revealed to us. Tonight, I'm just stirring us up and just encouraging us that we need to get these praises going. Because when you start to praise your God like he is God, I mean, not just talk about him a little here or there, but when you start praising him like he is God, people are going to want to know about your God. They're going to start asking you about your God. They're going to start to see and not just, not just hear about your church. I want them to hear about your God that you, you're serving and the power of God working in your life individually. The names of, of God in the Old Testament was to reveal who he was. We then take the next step and say because of who he is, then that's what he's going to do. But the original revelation was to declare who he was and that he never changed. God never changes. Who he was in the Old Testament, he's still in the New Testament. He wants us to praise him because he is the Lord God, our healer, not just waiting until I get healed. He wants us to praise him. He is the Lord God of our salvation, not just waiting until I need another dose of salvation to mine. He wants us to praise him that he is the Lord God, my peace, even in the midst of of all the problems that you're facing and struggles and turmoil and confusion and chaos in this world, you can just smile and say, the Lord is my peace in my life. And he never changes along the way. Start to declare who he is. Start to praise him. Oh, God, thank you that you never run out of peace in, in life. You never run out of that shalom peace, nothing lacking, nothing wanting. I thank you, Father God, that you are my peace. You are my strength. You are my healing. I don't care what string of what variance of what thing comes up in life. You are the Lord God, my healer in life. It has to be a praise that comes out of us. That we don't just wait until we hit the problem. That we don't wait until we want God to do something more for us. But we start to thank him for who he is. Praise him for who he is in your life. It would be good for you just to, to start to go through your day. I would encourage you, to try to make it at least till noon before you ask something from God. And spend that morning just praising him for who he is. Praising him. I'm just calling you out tonight. We're not praising God enough. If, uh, folks, if we don't discipline ourselves to praise God during the week, and if we don't delight in coming together as the body of Christ at, 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 on a regular basis once a week, I'm telling you, prophetically, I'm telling you, when you get in a problem situation, you're not going to praise God. You will complain. You will murmur. You will find reason that it's somebody else's fault. Instead of being able to stop and to be able to say, God hasn't changed no matter what's going on in my life. And when you don't feel like praising God, if you don't discipline yourself on a regular basis, you will allow your fickle feelings to determine whether the Almighty God gets the praise that belongs to Him. What a sad situation. Well, I just don't feel like it today, Pastor. I'm just not feeling it in the service today, Pastor. I didn't feel like going to church today, Pastor. I didn't feel like praising God this morning, you know. Just, just kind of got up and just didn't, you know, just kind of one of those Mondays, just kind of Mondays. God's the same on Sunday as he is on Monday. Huh? I'm just calling us out, folks. This isn't, this isn't just based on, on whether or not, uh, you know, that you, you, you like the song service or whether we have a song service. This is based on who God is in our life. What if I was to say right now, stand up and praise the Lord like he is almighty God in your life. How many of us would, oh, praise you, Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. What are you praising the Lord for? Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Give me a, an intimate relationship. When I am thankful for my wife, I got reasons. I just don't go around saying, thank you, thank you, Marilyn, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. No, I tell her, thank you for that good meal that you made. Thank you for what you did. Thank you for cleaning the house. 
uh, uh, thank you for letting me do the dishes tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me fold the clothes. Thank you for not being selfish. And, 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 and thank you. Thank you for letting. Thank you. My wife, she's good about filling the cars up with gas. I'm terrible. I, I try to, for some reason, I believe God for every fume I can out of that can. But she goes and gets them filled up. And, and th- I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for those things. So I have specific things I'm telling her I'm thankful for or in one sense praising her for. Now, I'm not praising her in place of God, but it's all right for you to give some some praise where praise is due. Huh? It'd be all right for you to to find some reasons to be thankful for other people around you, too. You got reasons to complain. You got time to complain, don't we? Huh? We got time for that. We We can work that one into the schedule, can't we, Deborah? We can work that into the schedule. But when we are supposed to only continually be praising, and when we realize, folks, that we are the body of Christ, we need to be careful how we're talking about one another. Amen? Paul said, many are sick and even die premature because you're not discerning the Lord's body. He's not just talking about that cracker you took on first Sunday of the month. He's talking about the body of Christ and how we treat one another. Praise needs to be something that we are disciplining ourselves for. He still is the Almighty in our life. I'm calling us out tonight because we are supposed to be praising God like He is God. And, we're not, and I, want to, I want to encourage you, that especially in your daily life, but also when we come together and we have church service, Let's start praising God like we're praising the God that saved us, delivered us, is going to be with us, has a plan for us, a purpose for us, has placed his Holy Spirit on the inside of us, given us the most valuable blessing in life by his presence. In our, let's start worshiping God. Let's, let's get ahead and tell the worship team, you're going to have to step it up because you're not going to be able to keep up with me because I'm going to worship God like he is the Almighty. And all. I am going to... Uh, ag- I am going to not worry about who's seeing me doing what. I am going to exalt him, if necessary, fall on my face before him, shout praises unto him, lift maybe even both hands. Get both hands up there and magnifying the Lord. And my, I'm going I'm to go so much that I'm going to offer the sacrifice of praise. That, that goes beyond our, our just little comfort zone. It goes beyond just uh, when God did something and we respond to it, but that we are intentionally, on purpose, offering a praise unto him. I'm calling us out tonight because he still is the almighty God. In the New Testament, we have Jesus. Does anybody know Jesus in the house tonight? Are, are you thankful for Jesus in your life? Is he more than just a name that you put at the end of a prayer? Is he a person that's with you, never leaves you nor forsake you in that sense? Is he your good shepherd? Is he the, 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 the one who gives you the plan of salvation? In the New Testament, we have the sevenfold names of Jesus when he says, I am along the way. It'd be good for you to look at one of them. Seven, hmm, that's like one a day for a week that you could meditate on. The seven I am's of Jesus where I am the door, I am the way, I am the good shepherd. I am, I am, I am. It would be good for you. Well, pastor, do you have them? uh, Do you know where those are? Yes, I do, but it'd be good for you to look them up. You find them. You dig them out. You go through the book of John where he says these things. I am the vine, and these are there that are connected to me. They're going to bear fruit. I am the Son of God. I, before Abraham was, I am, he says. Wow. When we start thinking about who he is, it should cause us to praise him. And the more revelation I have of personal revelation, do you know that he is the good shepherd. Can I get three other people to say yes? The good shepherd. The good shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep. Have you thought about that lately? That Jesus laid down his life for you. That Jesus was willing to face the adversary for you. Have you thought about that lately? That Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life that you can't get to the Father except through Jesus Christ. 
Have you thought about that lately? That it's not that you didn't have to do good works to, be, to earn an entrance into the Father. Have you thought about that lately? Because every one of us have messed up too much to get to heaven on our own good works. But Jesus said, I am the door. Aren't you glad that we don't have to try to find which door it is? Is it door number one? Is it door number two or door number three? Which one of these doors do you think it's going to be? Which one of these religions do you think it's going to be? Which one of these philosophies do you think it's going to be? Oh, I'm so glad that I know that Jesus is the door of eternal life that he's given to us. And that we can know him. And all we got to do is step through that door into salvation. And that eternal relationship with him. That intimacy that he's given unto us. Isn't it wonderful that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. That he is, he's made it easy for us to come to him, to be drawn to him. And that light always is a, 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 a revelation of growth. You can't grow stuff where there's no light. You've got to have light to have life. And Jesus said, I am the light. And because I am the light, I am the life. And his life comes in us. But here's the folks. Here's what you got to do. You know, just recently, Marilyn had, any of you ever have extra flashlights around the house? If you ha here's an equation. Flashlights plus grandchildren equal darkness. Because they'll drain them batteries so quick, they will either play with them things or leave them on or whatever. A Marilyn, she came up with, a, I don't know, half a dozen of flashlights. And I'm going through and almost every one of them has either got the batteries are about dead or you got a, you ever take a flashlight and you do that? Have you ever take, thought maybe some Christians, we need to uh, tap them a little bit to see whether the light's still on on the inside. God forbid that they should wonder whether the light's on the inside of us or not. I tell you what, the light ought to be burning bright in our lives. The more intimate your relationship with the I am the light of the world, the, the brighter the light I am is in me. Amen? How, I'm calling us out tonight. You're going to go through tough times. This world is going to get darker. Let's get brighter. Let's get more committed to knowing God in our life. I'm not asking you to memorize scripture so you can win some trivial pursuit. I'm asking you to put the word of God on the inside of you so it's difficult for the devil to take the truth of God and your relationship away from you. He's giving us this wonderful truth of who he is in this world. I am, here's one you might get excited about. I am the resurrection and the life before he died. When he went to, to deal with Lazarus in that situation where he'd been dead for four days, Jesus is saying, death doesn't have authority over me. I have authority over death. I am not I'm going to be, but I am the resurrection and the life. Too many times we're living like this life is the only life instead of living like the life is what we're going to. And we're just got a new experience with it in us when we know Jesus in our life. Do you know the resurrection and the life right now? Paul said the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. All that resurrection power is on the inside of us because he's on the inside of us. And when we start to realize who is with us, then it's not us trying to get the God that's way off in heaven to answer our prayers. It is us being amazed that the God that is with us is manifesting himself among us. I'm not saying we shouldn't pray I'm just saying when we start to praise God because we know who he is, it's been lately. Anybody felt the pressure, the weight, the, the, the just cares of this world that seemingly just trying to, to pull us down and we're looking for other things to be able to come into our life to just give us a, a numb feeling if nothing else. We're not even looking for a high. We're just looking for a numb. Folks, and, but if we get along with God, 
and we start to, to thank God for who he is. Oh, Father God, thank you. Thank you that you're my salvation. We start to, to just praise Jesus for who he is. Oh, Jesus, you are my salvation. You are my redeemer. You are the almighty one in my... Start thanking and praising God for the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Is anybody getting happy tonight or is this just a Pastor Dennis moment? I'm just calling you out. Because it, we're getting to a point, folks... You've all, as for, for the most part of what I know, you've all been saved longer than any of the disciples when Jesus left them. you all been saved and got a Bible on your lap of which the disciples did not have. They had none of the letters of Paul that came later on. And look what they did. Most of them uneducated. Most of them just, just uh, 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 blue-collar workers out there. And they turned the known world upside down because they knew who their God was. Do you know him? Do you want to know him? Do you want to know him more? Are you afraid of what the relationship's going to cost you? Are you afraid that, that it's gonna, he's going to ask you to do something that you're not comfortable to do? Folks, this isn't about whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. This is about whether you're saved or whether you're not saved. And if we're saved, then we are a purchased people. We belong to him. You either belong to God or you belong to the devil. Thank God for the blood that purchased us, set us free to have real ability to follow after him in life. We've got to understand the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, is on the inside. He is our strengthener in our lives. We've got to get to know him. I'm so thrilled when people are saying, I want to learn to hear the voice. How do I know the voice of the Holy Spirit? That you're hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit right there because that's a hunger that he's stirring on the inside of you that he wants you to know him more. It's not a mathematical equation. It's not just do these three things. It's not put a fleece out here and see if it gets wet. It is knowing his voice like a child who knows the voice of their father. How do you do that? You spend time with him. You close out those other voices. You start to listen to him. You start to value his voice so much. I'm just calling us out tonight because... Because God wants to bless your life immensely, that's for sure. But the greatest blessing is God using our life. And the only way we'll be confident that God is going to use us is when we have a revelation of who he is. When I know who God is, it starts to change the way that I respond to him. You can just write this verse down tonight. It, it's, I know you're surprised, but pastor's preaching for an hour and talking longer here. But Psalm 150, verse 6, just you know this verse, but let me, let me read it to you. Psalm 150, verse 6, it says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Have you heard that verse before? He's not talking about the rooster in the morning. He's not talking about uh, the metal arcs on the field. It's not the breath that he's talking about. He's talking about you and me. He's talking about the human individual that has the breath. The rooster, listen to me, the rooster, when that sun comes up in the morning, he has no choice. He's going to crow whether you like it or not. He's going to crow whether the hens are awake or whether the fox got them that night. It's because that's just who that, that, he has no choice. You and I are the only creation of God that have, a, that have choice. And he says, let, let everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Does any, I, I got just two quick questions here. Is anybody got breath tonight? Can I hear that? Uh, yes, that will confirm it. Uh, some of you are kind of questioning. I'm just asking. I'm just making sure. Do you have breath? Are you praising the Lord? I'm calling you out. Are you, what are you using that breath for? I'm not here to condemn us. I'm just here to, let's make sure the batteries are working. 
Let's make sure that we're living for God. Because it does not matter what is, and please understand what I'm saying here. This is where we get to be grown up Christians. It does not matter who you are. It does not matter what has happened to you. It does not matter what others are saying about you. It doesn't change who God is. And when we get a hold of who God is, he is always worthy of praise. No matter what's going on in our life. And as we start to praise the, the unmovable God, he starts to move in our lives. Praise seems to release the power of God in our lives. In Acts chapter 16, we'll close with this, one, uh, this story that you remember very well. Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas go down and they preach the gospel. And they see a demon-possessed woman that gets set free. Isn't that good news when someone gets set free from the devil? Good news for everybody but the owner of that slave girl. Now they lost their cash cow. They, they, this woman's no longer making them any money, so they're upset. Heathens, that w- these people that would, would enslave someone, abuse someone, use someone, and allow a demon to be in that person for their own personal, for their personal gain. How, how terrible is that? How terrible is that? And then when the person gets set free, they're upset and they start to tell lies about Paul and Silas. And so the whole city's up against them. You know how the story goes. Paul and Silas are taken. They're beaten, thrown into prison, inner prison. They're put in stocks. And uh, there they are at midnight. Acts chapter 16, about verse 25. At midnight, what are they doing? Let me say it this way. What are you doing at midnight? What are you doing when people are lying about you at midnight? What are you doing when you got problems that there's no way seemingly out of it? What are you doing when you've been mistreated, abused, maybe even discomfort, pain or suffering comes into you? At midnight, what are you doing? Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises to God. We know this verse. We know these stories. They're not just in the Bible for us to read about it. They're not just for us there to look at it and say, well, that was Paul. No, that was an example of what God will do in a person's life. What do you do when it's the darkest? They were in the inner dungeon at midnight. What were they doing? Singing and singing, they were praying and singing hymns of of praises to God. That would be enough, but it says, and all the prisoners heard them. I'm just calling us out here, folks. What do people hear us saying? What do people hear coming out of our mouth? When we're mistreated, when people are lying about us, when things aren't going good in our life, when it seems dark and doom, despair, and agony is me, what, what are we saying out of it? What comes out of our loud mouth at that time when we feel like there may be even suffering? If we are not daily disciplining ourselves to praise God because who he is, not just because of something he's done lately in our life. If we are not delighting ourselves in a regular basis of coming together as the household of faith and praising God on a weekly basis, if we are not, if we are not committed to living like that, when those moments of discomfort come, we will not be ready to respond in alliance with who our God is, we will react according to our feelings or our thoughts at that time. We know what this story goes on. At midnight, they were worshiping, praising God for who he was. All the prisoners heard him. I think we need to turn the volume up on our praise. Turn the volume up on our praise. Marilyn and I were out the other day in the car, and you know, Days are starting to cool off a little bit. We had our windows down. We pulled up with some, beside one individual. They were playing some music, we'll just say, wasn't my particular type. 
So what does my wife do? She turns up our radio. She turns up uh, uh, to, a, to a higher decimal than what maybe we would normally enjoy. Folks, you know, I, I'm not asking you to, 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 be, to be something you're not. I'm asking you to be who you are. Who you are. You are a child of Almighty God. Who are you? Don't let the devil tell you that you're just an introvert. So I stay quiet with my praise. Don't let the devil tell you that you can't worship God. Paul and Silas are in prison with their backs beaten and they're in stocks. They're thinking, what do we got to lose, man? It can't get any worse than this. Let's worship. Let's praise God. And all the prisoners heard him. The jailer gets saved and his whole family out of this situation. Their feet and their stock are loosened. There's an earthquake and all the prisoner doors are set, set free. Wow. It doesn't seem that they're like there's a response from God until there is an acknowledgement of his God in our life. Are you praising him? Are you praising him like you should? Are you praising him like he is the almighty in our life. I'm just calling us out tonight. If we're called out of darkness, let's act like we're not in darkness anymore. If we're called into the marvelous light, let's, let's act like we're called into the marvelous light. Let, let's get stirred up in our lives. Let's, let's get excited about who our God is and, and, and not just disappointed that he didn't do what I wanted him to do last time and, and he didn't answer my prayer as quick as, he, as I wanted him to last time and, and I didn't get as good a job as I wanted last time. But, but he's still God in our life. And when we, when, we, when we hold on to that and we acknowledge that and we start to decree that and declare that and start to praise him for that, it's amazing it's amazing what God can do in our lives. More importantly, folks, it's just what we should do because of who he is. Are you going to praise him? I know you are. Are you going to memorize that verse in Peter? I know you will. I know they're going to, because we're going to, we're going to turn up the lights. We're going to, we're going to turn up the fire. And how are we going to do it? We're just going to get closer to God in our life. We're going to catch the fire because of intimacy with him. Heavenly Father, right now, we just thank you for your presence in our life. Father, I just thank you that we're at this point. We're not asking you to do more in our lives. We're just standing in your presence and amazed at what you've already done because of who you are. We are amazed that because you are with us, the same works that Jesus did, we will do also. Lord, we're not here trying to... to to beg from you, we are just here to praise you and to thank you that you are still head of the church, you are still the victorious triumphant one, you still are the one who has, has revealed your presence to us and are going to continue to work through us. And so we just ex are excited, dear God, about who you are and a growing revelation of that. Lord, if there's any request we would have is simply this, that we might know you, that we might know you better that we might know you more intimately. That it's not just a mental thing. It's, it's not just a, a religious experience. It's not just a, a, a coming to church, but it is knowing God, your faithfulness, your love, your kindness, your mercy, your grace, your desire to transform our lives. That we might just know that you are the the triumphant one that wants to defeat the devil. You are the, the deliverer that wants to set us free in every area in our life. God, we just want to praise you for who you are. And Lord, I just, just thank you. Thank you for, for, for revealing yourself to us. Thank you for revealing the word to us. Thank you, Father God that you give us more and more reasons to praise you because we just know you more and more along the way. And Holy Spirit, have your way amongst us, we just pray. Your will be done this day. Lord, by mercy and grace even, we ask, start the fire afresh in our lives and just baptize afresh that fire in us for your glory. In Jesus' name, 
Amen.